everybody. Hope you like the small intro that you got to see all shot with this Panasonic Lumix GH5. You might have noticed that over the last one month I had posted a lot about the Panasonic GH5 on my Twitter, Instagram and even a couple of videos on my travel YouTube channel. So over the last one month I spent uh, quite a bit of my free time going through this particular camera, trying to find the differences between the GH4 and the GH5 and also learning a lot of uh, new things that is introduced as a part of this particular camera. So this particular video I'm going to share with you my uh, likings and dislikings about this camera. This in no way is a comprehensive review of this particular camera because I personally feel one month is too short to understand this particular camera because it's too complex, it has a lot of features that I'm still yet to explore. So this is more of like my opinion or my thoughts about this camera and what I liked about it and what I didn't like about it. So let's get started. To begin with, uh, let's talk about the positives of this camera. I have a lot to talk about the positives of this camera and uh, just like any other camera, this is not a perfect camera and uh, there are a few negative things that I want to talk about which will come back in the end. Um, the first thing that I want to talk about is the body. Uh, you might have noticed in my uh, unboxing video that I posted uh, in the channel that the very first opinion about this particular camera when it comes to this body was really, it's, it's a huge camera. It's like, um, unlike the GH4, which is a tiny one compared to this one, I'm someone who was used to 5D Mark II and 5D Mark III and the 70 series of cameras. There's quite bulkier cameras compared to the GH4, but the very moment I opened and held this in my hand, I could feel how solid this camera is built is. And also the ergonomics of this camera is way better than the GH4 or probably any other mirrorless camera that I've used off late. Uh, having said that, it's completely weather sealed and it's it's built like a tank uh, it has metal construction as well i happened to use this uh, in the very first few days of me getting this camera in hampi uh, which is in a place called bellari in karnataka it's one of the hottest places here in karnataka the temperature in summer can go to anywhere around 43 45 degrees or probably even more but during the time when i was there it was hovering around 42 to 43 degrees celsius and i was out with this camera a whole day and we were shooting in uh, broad day sunlight and i could notice that the camera body was getting uh, noticeably uh, hotter than any of the other cameras that I've used but that absolutely had no impact on the way the camera performed. I had no issues with recording, I didn't have any stoppages or overheating warning, nothing. The, the camera is so well built that the external weather conditions has zero impact on the way it, the way it performs. This when combined with this particular lens is an absolute beast to uh, use when you're out in the field. Um, when you're using this particular combination, especially the GH5 and the 1260 lens, this is the kit lens that comes with the GH5. Uh, there is no way anyone can tell that it's a mirrorless uh, camera. It looks really beefier and bulkier and slightly heavier, I would say, uh, but absolutely a treat to shoot with this particular camera. And it's it feels fantastic when you're shooting handheld on this one. And the reason why I opted for this 1260, uh, if you remember the GH4 comes with a 1235 f2.8 lens, it's a fantastic lens, it's a tiny lens uh, but it's a Lumix lens. Uh, before I picked up this particular body, I had this dilemma whether I should go for a kit lens or not go for the kit lens. So when I was picking up the GH4, I had to go for the kit lens because I didn't have any other micro four third lenses with me. But when it came to this particular GH5, I had a double mind whether I should go or not. But I eventually went for this particular lens for two things. First, it's a Leica make. So unlike the other uh, Panasonic Lumix lenses, this there are certain set of lenses that uh, the Panasonic makes which are Leica branded lenses and they are superior optical performance compared to the other lenses. And secondly, it's for the highest feature. Uh, most of you might know that the GH5 comes with a dual IS system. What the dual IS means is that the IS, the in-body stabilization, the 5-axis in-body stabilization works in tandem with the image stabilization of the lens and creates what is known as dual IS which gives you very stable footage when you're shooting handheld and also gives you a lot of advantage when you're shooting pictures uh, using handheld mode. So this is one specific lens 
which was allowing uh, me to use the dual is feature unlike the 1235 version 1 what i currently have so i didn't wanted to go for uh, selling of my 1235 version 1 and picking up the new version which is uh, dual is 2 capable so i thought like let me go for this particular lens and I would say I was not disappointed. It's a fantastic lens, super sharp. Uh, it's it's much more bulkier when compared to the 1235, but um, uh, it's definitely one of the best investment I've made when it comes to the lenses, and especially more so for the GH5. So while talking about this dual IS, I did mention about uh, the five axis in body stabilization. That's the third most important thing I liked about this particular camera. Having used only IS lenses in past, I know what are the advantages of uh, using an IS lens. But this particular body comes with 5 axis in body stabilization and that when combined with the IS lens, um, these are like native mount lenses from Panasonic. It gives you an absolute super smooth uh, videos. Uh, I even posted one particular video wherein I was walking uh, in one of the temples in Hampi and that was a shot completely handheld no gimbal or no handle stabilizers anything used it was me walking holding this particular camera in my hand and i can say that the in body stabilization works like a charm on this particular body and it's it's one of the must look forward to feature in a gh5 when you compare it with gh4 and i absolutely love that particular feature in this one one of the highlight of this particular camera is the 4K 60p internal. There is no other camera in this particular price point which can do 4K 60p internal. Yeah, absolutely no recorders are required. This does 4K 60p internal and also it does full HD in uh, 180 frames per second. These are two of the key selling features of this particular camera that is 4K 60p and uh, 180 frames per second in full HD. And Majority of my shooting over the last uh, one month has been in that 4K 60p frame rates. I have not experimented much with the 180 frames per second, but I did shoot quite a lot uh, when I was there in Hampi. I do feel there are uh, certain drawbacks, especially when it comes to the 180 frames per second, but I'll come back to that when I'm talking about the negatives of this camera. So if you're shooting something like an action sequence or something related to wildlife or any movement, uh, shooting 4K 60p internal along with the dual IS2 uh, when you render it at 25 frames per second it's an absolute treat to watch and these are the type of footages which gives you that cinematic feel compared to the conventional 24 or 25 frames per second shooting that we generally do. Having spoken about uh, 4K 60 frames per second or even the 180 frames per second, uh, you might know that this is completely data hungry. Uh, it requires uh, bigger memory cards to write all those information. One of the plus points that this camera has is this dual SD card slot. So unlike the GH4 or probably any other uh, mirrorless camera that we have or probably even the DSLR camera this comes with dual SD card slot and um, there are about three ways you can configure this dual SD card either the overflow or probably photo into one card and video into other or even you can even have a copy of the same stuff on the card one and card two as of now I have kept it in the overflow mode and both the memory card slot I have put a 64 GB card and during any of my outing uh, either during the initial trip that I did with this camera or any of the shoots that I did over the last one month. I didn't have any uh, necessity for me to look out for the memory card and uh, change it or anything. So that 128 GB in the camera was more than sufficient for me. So when it comes to 4K shooting, uh, for the people who come from uh, the background of shooting in GH4 and then coming to GH5 one very noticeable thing is the 2.3x crop which is not present in the GH5 so uh, for the folks who don't know the GH4 when you're shooting in the 4k uh, video mode there is a 2.3x crop that's an additional 0.3x crop uh, in the video field of view but that is not present in this particular camera so what is the advantage is that especially when you're shooting architecture or when you're shooting landscape you don't have to change your existing wide angle lens to bring in say like an ultra wide angle lens I but I personally shoot with the 8mm uh, fisheye lens especially when I'm shooting on the GH4 uh, when I want the uh, ultra wide uh, field of view but I never had a, rec a necessity for me to go ahead and change to that particular lens when I'm shooting with this particular camera so that direct micro four third uh, 2x crop was uh, more than sufficient for me to get the field of view that I wanted
So the lack of that 0.3x crop factor is a big plus on the GH5. We were talking about uh, the videos, especially the 4K 60p and the 180 frames per second and all. But not many people realize that this is a fantastic stills camera. Uh, you might have seen me post a few photos on my Instagram profile as well as on my Twitter. The still images out of this new 20 megapixel sensor is absolutely fantastic. The detail and the colors are absolutely gorgeous and I don't think so. Uh, there is any reason for somebody not using this as a primary uh, photo camera instead of picking this up only for the 4K video capabilities of this particular camera. Photos is a big plus. I personally have not shot much of uh, low light stuff in this camera yet. So I don't know if I am uh, capable enough of commenting like uh, the ISO performance. Uh, they do say that there is an improvement but I don't expect it to be too good uh, especially coming from the background that it is a micro four thirty uh, sensor but if you're shooting in a good daylight or probably when you're using the flash the images out of this particular camera are absolutely fantastic and full of details and very rich colors again going back to the comparison with the GH4 one thing that anyone would notice is this particular uh, electronic viewfinder and the LCD there has been a huge improvement in both the viewfinder as well as the LCD the viewfinder is much bigger and brighter uh, same is the case with the LCD which is slightly bigger than the GH4 but having said that the resolution of both the things are fantastic and even in broad daylight when you're shooting there is absolutely no issues when it comes to the viewing irrespective of the angle or even when you're using the touch screen on the LCD uh, there's absolutely no issues with that so this definitely is a big improvement from the GH4 I had no issues with my GH4 LCD or the viewfinder but making it better is definitely advantageous the last couple of things I would like to talk about is customization of this camera. Uh, I am someone who tries to customize each and every single button which is available in a camera. That's exactly what I've done with my GH4 and GH5 is no less. Compared to the GH4, the GH5 comes with 20 custom function buttons. Yes, you heard it right, 20 custom functions. That's about double the number of custom function buttons that's available in a GH4. So. You can assign each and every single of this button or the options that is present in the LCD to a specific feature that you want to reuse or want to use when you're doing a particular kind of shooting. So I have configured uh, buttons to change my resolution, configured buttons to change my picture profiles, buttons to enable or disable the digital zoom. So it's like it's really handy to have so many uh, custom function buttons which you can program it to activate a certain feature and it's really helpful on the field instead of we going into the menu system and trying to dig out where they are and how to f uh, enable or disable them. The function button are definitely big plus. Having spoken about the function button, the last point I want to highlight in this particular camera is the My Menu feature. This is a new thing that the Panasonic have introduced, uh, especially in the GH series. The GH4 didn't have it. For the folks who don't um, use this functions button much and who feel that they might forget what is the function button that they have assigned to, there is a specific feature called My Menu that they have introduced in the menu option. You can actually feed in all the most commonly used menu items into that My Menu feature so that every time you have to go and customize a certain things in your particular camera, you don't have to dig deep into the menu system. The My Menu is something which gets triggered automatically when you click on the menu button uh, in the back of this particular camera. It doesn't go into the default uh, video functions or the photo functions. It directly goes into the My Menu option. So if you sort of keep all your most commonly used menu items in that particular uh, folder or I would say that menu uh, sub menu system that will be really helpful because if you don't use a function button that's the best way to access all the most commonly used function I would personally say it's a definitely good move by Panasonic to introduce something like that in this particular camera We spoke about a lot of positives about this particular camera and as I said in the beginning this is not a perfect camera this has its own drawbacks, this has its own hardware issues and probably a few software issues which I'm not really sure if Panasonic can fix it using firmware but if they can do that's really awesome. But here are some of my personal nitpicks about this particular camera which I didn't like or probably over a period of time I might get used to it or something but here are my top 5 picks for the things which I don't like about this particular camera. 
Firstly, the battery. Uh, if you have seen the video that I did about GH5 uh, during the announcement of this particular camera, uh, I did highlight about the battery aspect of it. The battery in GH5 is exactly the same as what is used in a GH4. So I was expecting the battery to perform equally or comparable with the GH4, but surprisingly it's not the case. The battery life is much shorter compared to the GH4. I personally feel it has something to do with the in-body image stabilization and also the DOLIS. It's eating up a little bit of battery power. But having said that, the battery is not a big issue and it's nowhere comparable to what is the issue that we face with Sony cameras. This particular camera, even when I was shooting 4K 60p, with the dual is and all those features enabled and lct always on it, it lasted me for one full day uh, probably it will last with me for more than a day on my gh4 but gh5 was not uh, definitely disappointing but when you compare it with gh4 it's definitely less than what a gh4 can give when it comes to the battery life the next couple of things I'm going to talk about which I didn't like about this camera are about buttons. Okay, uh, if you have noticed in the Panasonic GH5, the record button is moved to the top instead of back. So there are a lot of people who like this particular button placement, but me personally, I was not convinced with this particular placement of button because on a normal shooting position, especially when you're doing handheld, the placement of the button is too back and it has to take a lot of effort for you to pull your finger back and click the record button. But I personally felt if the button was placed here itself, that's the place where uh, the GH4 record button is, um, the button is much more concave when it comes to the GH4, but this is a diff uh, slightly bulged uh, button what you find in GH5. If the same button was placed here, that would have been a still better option than placing it here. Or alternatively, I felt that if, he, if they had placed the record button somewhere uh, here near the white balance and ISO buttons and bring them back or probably even go to the next extent of having the record button close to the shutter button like the way it's there in Nikon cameras that would have been better than this particular placement because I personally feel the usability wise it's not that really handy. Panasonic allows you to trigger the video using the shutter button itself especially when you're in creative movie mode so it's absolutely uh, no loss whatsoever for the person who is using this particular camera and even if that's the case that's definitely a better option than having the record button somewhere in the corner of this particular hand grip and having to struggle to figure out where is the record button like we find in Sony cameras. Having told about the record button, the next uh, thing that I don't like about button placement is this particular display button which is there here. In the GH4, this display button was slightly above and not so back. So the, my issue with this particular display button is that it comes exactly below the bottom portion of your thumb when you're shooting handheld and there are very high chances that the button gets uh, pushed when you're shooting and when you're handling the camera. There were a couple of instances when I'm shooting handheld uh, in the recent past that the display went off and I had to stop the recording to figure out what exactly happened and then I realized it was basically because the display button getting pushed from my thumb because of the position that is kept in. The Panasonic could have retained the display button slightly above like the way it is in GH4 instead of bringing it back and exactly in the place where the thumb rest but I don't know if there is no there is no option to even disable this particular uh, display button uh, in fact like I noticed that even uh, Casey Nastat one of the popular uh, YouTube bloggers even he had issues with the display button he made a small hack of putting a cardboard with a duct tape on it I don't want to do all those stuff but if there is a way to disable this display button uh, using any of the menu options that will be a good option but probably I would uh, like to live with that particular issue because most often I usually shoot with the, the camera on a tripod so that should not be an issue but especially for the people who shoot handheld or even say like even I'm shooting handheld I don't want the display to go off especially because my uh, thumb touched the display button and that's definitely one of the change which I personally didn't like um, in the GH5. So we spoke about few hardware issues which I didn't like about the GH5. I'll talk about a couple of things in the software implementation or probably something I would say it's more of like a software dependent feature. One of my favorite feature in the GH5 is the slow motion especially the 180 frames per second in Full HD. But 
one very disappointing thing about that is in VFR that's variable frame rate mode the auto focus is disabled on this particular camera and that's a big big no from my end because there is no way you can switch back to VFR off and then focus and come back to VFR on and then continue shooting uh, especially for me when I, I come from uh, wildlife and travel photography uh, background and when you're shooting wildlife having auto focus especially for the slow motion stuff is an absolute must because the animals or birds might be moving in a different focal plane so having to change that manually it's a little bit of a challenge so i personally feel the inability to do auto focus in the vfr mode is an absolute uh, letdown for me the last thing that i'm going to talk about negative about this particular camera uh, it's again related to software is the vlog Vlog is basically a picture profile that Panasonic gives. It's available in the Varicam. It's uh, available in GH4 and GH5 for purchase. It costs about uh, $99 and close to about $7,500 in, here in India. The way to enable Vlog is an absolute cumbersome process. You might have seen my video which I did for activation of Vlog in GH4 and GH5. The Vlog package came to me about two weeks after I purchased this particular camera and it basically is a box containing an envelope which contains a small cardboard piece with a number written on it. It's basically a alphanumeric sequence and that's not directly what you use here. You need to export the serial key from this particular camera to your memory card and then upload the serial key onto the Panasonic website. Uh, they take you to a page where you're supposed to enter the key that you got in the Vlog activation box and that will in turn generate a particular file which you have to copy back to the SD card and then come back and put it in the camera and activate Vlog. That's really really not acceptable and it's like really lengthy process. Over the past couple of weeks I had uh, folks come out to my office uh, here and they had trouble on understanding how that whole activation thing works and we actually sat here and we got the Vlog activated in their particular cameras. So we are talking about like 2017 and we're talking about internet era and things can be done over internet in a much simpler and shorter period of time rather than going through all these package boxes and envelopes and things coming in post and it's it could have been done in a simpler way the implementation could have been a bit straightforward and simple than all this cumbersome process so the vlog activation process is something which i didn't like uh, in this particular camera that's the same case with my gh4 as well but i was surprised that the same thing continues for gh5 and that's the reason why i highlighted about that so that sort of is my probably five um, negative points about this particular camera. Probably I'll come back after a few months and tell if my thoughts changed, if any of the positives got converted into negative, or if there was a workaround that I found for all the negatives that I uh, discussed or probably any firmware which fixed it. But those were it, my top 10 uh, positives and top five negative things about this particular camera which is the Panasonic Lumix GH5. In the coming weeks I'll be sharing a lot of videos about how to use certain features especially the uh, focus transitions and 6k photo mode in this particular camera. I've been experimenting with that so I'll be putting a lot of videos about that in the coming weeks but un until then please don't forget to check out my other channel which is related to travel where I'll be posting a lot of content short with this particular camera and hope you like that and uh, please make sure that you subscribe there as well if you're not already done. So this is me Shiv uh, signing off and I'll see you in the next one.